Good morning, CCM. Today is the morning CCM scripture. It's 1 Peter 1, 8 through 9. Though you may have not seen him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressive and glorious joy. For you are, for you are receiving the end result of your faith the salvation of your souls. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, Father God, for the reading of your word today. Be in our presence and our midst as we worship you this morning, Father God. We thank you for every moment that has brought us uh, 
through thus far. We ask you to continue to bless us and be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Join the best church this side of heaven on, for Thursday night Bible study on Zoom at 7 p.m. Download the Zoom app to your mobile device and use the following meeting ID, 648-345-4676. See you Thursday night, 7 p.m. Join us on Sunday, live stream service from Zoom to Facebook, 11.30 a.m. Also this month, this week, we will drop off coats, hats, scarves to Skyline Nursing Home. And also starting this week, we are starting a Christmas goodie drive for Skyline Nursing Home. The Christmas goodie drive includes candy, fruit, hand sanitizer, lotion, and tissue. Drop off date, December the 18th. And remember, what you give lives at CCM. If you'd like to give to CCM, please cash app CCM213 or give on tightly. Now I'll put you back in the hands of Sister Rebecca. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine.
Sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for um, this blessed assurance that you've brought us that you're there for everything, um, that we're always loved because of you. That brings us so much joy today, and we're grateful for that. I pray that um, you would open our eyes and ears to what Pastor Lance has to say today. In the name I pray, amen. 
Amen. Amen. Beautiful prayer, Sister Rebecca. Psalm 150 says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Are you giving God praise today? In Luke 19, Christ said that if his worshipers would hold their peace, that the rocks would still cry out. I don't know about you, but as for me on this Sunday morning, I'm gonna give God all the praise, all the honor and all the glory. The rocks won't have to cry out on my behalf. Glory to God. Blessed to be with you once again on another Sunday morning as we uh, continue this series uh, about King David and being a man after God's own heart. What about you? Do you wanna be a person after God's own heart? I know I do. I wanna be pleasing to the Lord and I wanna be an encouragement uh, to all the brothers and sisters uh, that God sends my way. Let's look again at our text, Acts 13, 22. We've been taking a look at this every Sunday is just a reminder uh, of David being a man after God's own heart. Let's look at it. It says, after removing Saul, he made David their king. God testified concerning him. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. I think God has given us a clue right there about what it takes to be someone after his own heart. That last part right there, he will do everything I want him to do. I, look, I know life has its challenges. I know that this Christian walk has its challenges, but God rewards obedience. Amen. Do I hear any amens out there in Cyberland? God rewards obedience. It pleases him when we do all that he asks us to do. This morning, I want to talk to you about joy. Uh, that is one of the reasons as we look at the Bible that we can glean about how David was a man after God's own heart. And I hope that you also, saints, that you also have been uh, noticing how all of these spiritual fruits, uh, how our capacity to bear them is pleasing to God and makes us children after his own heart. So once again, another reminder, Galatians 5, 22 to 23. We're gonna put it on the screen for you. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Remember uh, this morning we're talking about joy. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Here's what it says. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Like the commercials that say, got milk? My question for you this morning is, do you got joy? Do you got joy? And my argument, my, my thesis statement to you this morning is that if you have Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then there's no reason that you shouldn't have joy today. Let's look at a definition for joy. In fact, I found this one right off of the internet. Let's take a look. What is joy? It says having joy includes feeling good cheer and a vibrant happiness, but joy in its fuller spiritual meaning of expressing God's goodness involves more. It is a deep rooted, inspired happiness. Again, I pulled that one right off the internet. Let's look at what the evangelical dictionary uh, has to say. It says joy is a delight in life, that runs deeper than pain or pleasure. Don't miss that, saints. From a biblical perspective, it is not limited by nor tied solely to external circumstances. Remember that? Joy is a gift of God. 
And like all of his other inner gifts, it can be experienced even in the midst of extremely difficult circumstances. That being said, no matter what we're going through, with Jesus Christ as Lord of our lives, we can experience joy no matter what the experience may be. It's not based on our circumstances. Remember that this morning, saints. Joy is not based on your circumstances, but it's based on your relationship with Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Do I hear any amens out there in Cyberland? Uh, just considering the past couple of weeks, we, we've talked about the ice storm here that we had a couple of weeks ago uh, in, in Oklahoma City and, and how I enjoy reading and hearing from, 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 from folks about how they were trusting in the Lord, how they stayed positive, even, even sitting in the cold with no electricity on, they still found a way to have joy. And, and that's what joy is. It's not dependent on what's going on. Glory to God. I, it, it, it made me feel good inside when people had patience in spite of the anxiety that they may have been trying to resist during the election where we were waiting uh, for the results. Man, and, and what, I'm, what I'm suggesting to you this morning is that when you have joy, it doesn't matter what's happening on externally because joy is based on what's going on the inside. Like, like somebody said before, it's something on the inside. And get this, the, you know, the, the, the devil, he loves elections because he figures that in a divided country, he can take the joy away of almost 50% of us because we'll allow him to based on the results. Notice I said we will allow him to. Joy is something that once you get it from God, can't nobody take it away. It's there. You just got to call on it. Amen. You just got to call on it and trust in it. It's deeply rooted on the inside, not based on our outside circumstances. Uh, we've been reading in Revelation about how the enemy is behind uh, the cruel world system that we live in. And one way that he intends to keep us entangled in this world system is through our politics. Be careful. The scripture says, be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. I have joy down in my heart, and can't nobody take that away. Once again, what's the key? Well, if we listen to King David or the Apostle Paul, they would say that because joy comes directly from the spirit of God that it is not bound on what is happening in this world or even necessarily what is happening in our own personal lives. Amen. Take a look at this in Psalm 100. Psalm 100. Let's look at verses one through five. It says, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Verse four. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give, him, uh, give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Notice nothing in that, in that uh, 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 encouragement to be joyful talked about our current circumstances. It only talked about our God and his love for us. If you were down when this message started, you ought to already be feeling the joy of the Lord because it's not dependent on your circumstances, but it's dependent on our God, amen, who sustains us no matter what we are going through. If we look at it uh, in the King James Version, verse one, just another different look. Verse one, the King James Version says this, we need joy in our land, don't we? We need joy in our land. Look what it says, make a joyful shout to the Lord. What? All you lands. Glory to God. It doesn't matter what we are going through. 
we can always make a joyful shout to the Lord. Sometimes, saints, if you want joy, you have to encourage yourself. Let's pray. Gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you once again for bringing us through to another Sunday, for watching over us, Lord, for keeping us, for blessing us, Lord, for providing us even in the midst of a pandemic, uh, even in the midst of chaos of our politics, uh, even in the midst, Lord, of folk dealing with unemployment or underemployment, sadness and depression, Lord, we're, we're grateful that when we are intentional, that when we seek your face, we can realize that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So Lord, we just ask that you would open our hearts and our minds to your word this morning. Speak to us through the scriptures, Lord. Help us to, to, to remember that our joy comes for you, from you, and nobody can take that away from us. Help us to be better at the end of this church service than we were at the beginning. In the precious and mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen and amen. God bless you. Once again, so glad you could join us. Thank you to all our, our, our first time visitors. We're so glad that you're here. We know that you could worship with anybody, especially in today's age where we're having a lot of at home uh, worship. So we're just glad that you would join us today. To all of our viewers uh, in the Zoom meeting, as well as on Facebook Live and uh, YouTube, thank you so much for being with us. All right, let's get on to this message. Point number one is this, of this message. Point number one. All right. Sorry about that. Okay, please remember, uh, you got to be. Please remember, you got to be on mute or everyone else will hear the feedback. Okay, point number one of this message. If you want joy, sometimes you've got to encourage yourself. Glory to God. Sometimes you've got to encourage yourself. Notice I put yourself, not yourself. I meant to do that. Sometimes you've got to encourage yourself. Uh, and that's one way I wanted to encourage myself, by putting yo instead of your. I'm just having fun with the joy of the Lord on this beautiful Sunday morning. Nehemiah uh, says, my brothers and sisters, that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Uh, God, it may be this and that going on in the world or in my small world, but God, I thank you for the joy that I have in Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Well, what I'm saying is that when we want to have joy, we ought to give God praise instead of complain. Hello, somebody. When we want to have joy, we ought to shout for joy instead of lash out in anger. Uh, when we want to have joy, we ought to count our blessings instead of being envious. Uh, when we want to have joy, sometimes we simply just got to hide behind the cross. Glory to God. It's not dependent on our circumstances, but more so dependent on our attitude as children of God that we trust him and, the, and that we know that the joy is buried deep down in our hearts. Let's look at our text today. As we study David, the man after God's own heart, our primary test is 2 Samuel uh, chapter 12, verse 18 to 21. Chapter 12, verse 18 to 21. This is what it says. Uh, on the seventh day, uh, the child died. David's attendants were afraid to tell him that the child was dead. For they thought while the child was still living, he wouldn't listen to us when we spoke to him. How can we now tell him the child is dead? He may do something desperate. David noticed that his attendants were whispering among themselves, and he realized the child was dead. Is the child dead, he asked. Yes, they replied. He is dead. Verse 20. Then David got up from the ground, don't miss this. After he had washed, put on lotions, and changed his clothes, 
He went into the house of the Lord and worshiped. Then he went to his own house. And at his request, they served him food and he ate. His attendants asked him, why are you acting this way? While the child was alive, you fasted and wept. But now that the child is dead, you get up and you eat. So saints, what is happening here is, is David gets news that him and Bathsheba's child has died. And if you were paying attention, you would notice that David does something, my brothers and sisters, that we all can do when we get unpleasant news or when we experience unpleasant things. What does he do, you ask? David encourages himself. The Bible tells us that he got up, that he washed off, that he put lotions on, that he changed his clothes, and he began to worship the Lord. Can I tell you this morning, saints, that like David, when, 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 when we deal with circumstances that would cause us to be down, we don't have to stay down. In fact, we can too also encourage ourselves. Can I tell you something this morning that if you want joy, you can do things to keep you encouraged. David says, shoot, let me put on this new outfit that I just bought from the mall even though when I went to the mall, I had to wear my mask in the middle of a pandemic. He said, let me put on this new, this new lotion and this new cologne that Bathsheba uh, just bought for me. Let me turn on this gospel music and me and the Holy Spirit are gonna have our own uh, praise party. He says, let me treat myself uh, to, a, to a steak dinner at Cattleman's or, or, or a seafood dinner at Red Lobster, somebody said, wait a minute, Pastor, I'm low budget. All right, maybe it was Chili's or Applebee's or whatever the case may be. The point that I'm trying to make is that sometimes if you want to have joy, it means you've got to encourage yourself, my brothers and sisters. Sometimes you've got to encourage yourself. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself come on somebody you don't have to stay down you can get back up right on your own just you and the power of the holy spirit you can do that when you got joy because it doesn't matter what the situation is the song goes on to say sometimes you have to speak victory during the test and no matter how you feel Speak the word and you will be healed. Speak over yourself. Encourage yourself in the Lord. The New King James Version says that David even anointed himself. Instead of the lotions, New King James says that David anointed himself. Now, I, that was the first time I had noticed that as many times as I read this text. Uh, most other times when I think of being anointed, it's always a prophet anointing somebody like, like for instance, uh, Samuel anointing David. But David, the scripture says, anointed himself. My goodness, you can encourage yourself in the Lord by the joy of the Lord that's buried deep down in your heart. Uh, 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 the scripture says in, in verse 21 that, that David's uh, attendants were asking him, why are you acting this way? That they didn't understand it. Uh, before the child died, David was uh, down on the ground. He was fasting and, 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 and solemn. But when the child dies, all of a sudden, David gets up and he washes himself and he anoints himself and he begins to worship God. And they're like, how is David able to do this? Can I tell you this morning that joy is unreasonable? Joy doesn't want to reason with your circumstances. Joy is empowered by God who is greater than your circumstances. Encourage yourself, saints. That's all I'm simply saying. Encourage yourself through the joy of the Lord. Joy, like the peace of God, can defy human understanding. That's why they didn't understand why David was doing all that. Because joy, like the peace of God, can defy human understanding. Happiness, brothers and sisters, happiness, I've said this before, is about what is currently happening. 
but joy comes from the spirit of God and it is eternal, just like God is. David could have joy in spite of what happened to the child because for him, it wasn't about happiness, but it was about the eternal joy that can only come from an eternal God. And that's why David could worship God even in the most trying of circumstances. I hope I'm preaching to you this morning. This is some good preaching. Somebody right now, you may need to encourage yourself. Lean on the power and the joy that can only come from the spirit of God. Glory to God. I want to encourage somebody today. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Sit on that for a moment. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Glory to God. Don't let what may be happening in your life right now steal your joy. What may be happening right now, hey, maybe the lights are cut off in the middle of an ice storm, but that can't take away my joy because my joy is eternal. What, what may be happening right now, I may be grieving the loss of a loved one, but I have joy in knowing that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, glory to God. What is happening right now is that this pandemic is running wild and opportunities to be around some folk that I love may be taken away. But while that is taken away, I have joy, why? Because I know that Jesus is my portion. Do you have joy today? Glory to God. Verse 13, verse 13. In the coming weeks, we will explore uh, the first part of uh, chapter of chapter 12 and talk more in depth about what happens here in verse 13. Um, but today, just briefly, just briefly, this is what it says. Then David said to Nathan, this is prior to the child dying, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied, the Lord has taken away your sin. You are not going to die. Glory to God. What, what was happening was that David's child had died, but yet he could worship God in spirit and in truth because David understood that God is sovereign and that he had already taken away David's sin. David knew that he was going to live and not die. Can I speak that over someone today? God, if Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, has taken away your sin, you will live and not die. If that doesn't bring a smile to your face, even in difficult situations, if that doesn't encourage you to keep pushing and trusting in the Lord, I don't know what will. That ought to bring that joy that's deep down in your heart out into the external as well. I know that it does for me. Can I tell you that no matter what is happening, if Christ is Lord of your life, you have eternal joy in the pardon of your sins. And can't nobody or no devil in hell take that away from you unless you let them. Don't let it happen, saints. Hold on to that joy that comes straight from the spirit of God. Encourage yourself, my brothers and sisters. Point number two, point number two of this message, as we seek the scriptures to discover how to hold on to the joy of the Lord. Point number two is this. Move on, move on, my brothers and sisters, move on. That, that, that is so important if you wanna have joy, move on. Isn't, isn't that what David he, does here though, if we watch it? Uh, he, he, he got the news, the news wasn't news that he wanted to hear, but we see David didn't stay on the ground. David got up, David moved on. David went about his business of cleaning himself, of clothing himself, of worshiping God, uh, of getting something to eat. What I'm saying is that David, my brothers and sisters, moved on because he was empowered by the joy of the Lord. Let's look at the text again, this time verses 22 to 23. Verses 22 to 23. This is David talking. He answered, because remember, because his attendants were like, how are you doing all this stuff? How do you have, how are you behaving as if nothing happened? And obviously this is a bad thing that happened, David. Watch what David says. He answered, while the child was still alive, I fasted and wept. 
I thought, who knows? The Lord may be gracious to me and let the child live. But now that he is dead, why should I go on fasting? Can I bring him back again? I will go to him, but he will not return to me. And listen, I'm not trying to suggest uh, that grief is that easy. But what I am suggesting is one thing that helps us overcome uh, the pain and the turmoil of grief is that when we call on the joy of the Lord, he allows us to move on. He aids us to move on and to keep going, my brothers and my sisters. David says, why should I go on fasting? I can't bring him back. God has something else in store. His grace is sufficient. I got to move on. You, you got in an argument with somebody who you care about. Move on, my brothers and sisters. Don't hold on. Don't hold no grudges. Don't stay sad. Don't stay mad. Move on. The relationship didn't work. Man, you can have joy because you can move on. The job didn't work out. I got joy because I know God has another one lined up for me. I'm stuck at home for the holidays due to the pandemic. I got joy because in due season, I know that better days are ahead. Glory to God. And that the Lord is still with me. They, they treated me bad, but I got joy because I know that I'm a friend and a child of God. Move on, saints. Don't stay stuck. Move on through the power of the joy of the Lord. You can have joy when you move on because in Christ, the best is yet to come. David moved on. He understood that when God says no to something, that means he has said yes to something else. Glory to God. Your breakthrough and your blessing is coming. Don't let what happened to keep you down cause you to stay down. Your blessing is coming. Have joy. Have joy, my brothers and sisters. Have joy. Have joy. Uh, Christ endured the cross, the Bible says, for the joy set before him. Did you get that? The joy that was set before him. Not about what was happening while he was on the cross. Not about what's happening in our lives right now, but for the joy that God has set before us. Man, that brings a smile to my face. Glory to God. Who needs to hear this? The, the cross that you are enduring right now doesn't compare to the glory that lies ahead. Why look behind or stay stuck when there's so much more in store that lies ahead? The best is yet to come. You can find joy in moving on, saints. Revelation 21.4 says this. Not revelations with an S. Revelation. Revelation says this. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Glory to God. There would be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. Man, there can be joy in carrying our cross because there is a reward in store when we persevere. Can I tell you this morning that joy is, is a spiritual fruit that can help us persevere? Glory to God. Persevere, saints. Push on in the joy of the Lord. We're hard pressed on every side, but not crushed because we have joy. We're perplexed, but not in despair because, we're ha because we have joy. We're persecuted, but the joy of the Lord doesn't abandon us. Struck down but not destroyed because we have joy. The day is coming where God will right every wrong, where God will wipe every tear, where the enemy won't have any more power, where the world in its wicked ways won't have any more influence, where the flesh as we know it will be no more. Press on with joy, my brothers and sisters. Move on. Don't be stuck. Relish in the joy of the Lord. Philippians 1 says this, Philippians 1, 6 and 3, 14. We're going to put both of them on the screen for you. Philippians 1, 6, as well as 3, 14. Verse 1, 6 says this, be confident of this, 
that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to the to the complete carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Man, Jesus moved on. God moves on. He, he's carrying something to completion. He's not staying stagnant. We serve a dynamic God. Move on, my brothers and sisters. Move on if you want joy. Philippians 3.14 says, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God, take it back for me, please. For which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I press on, my brothers and sisters. I press on. There is a prize for me awaiting me when I press on. Glory to God. Move on, saints. Don't stay stuck. Press on and move on with the joy of the Lord, my friends. Point number three. Point number three is this. The joy of the Lord helps us to encourage others. The joy of the Lord helps us to encourage others. One more time, joy is not based on our circumstances, but it's based on our trust in the Lord. Amen. Amen. The joy of the Lord helps us to encourage others. Verse 24, verse 24 of our text, 2 Samuel 12 and 24 says this. Then David comforted his wife Bathsheba. And he went to her and made love to her. She gave birth to a son and they named him Solomon. The Lord loved him. Glory to God. David didn't stay stuck. David encouraged himself. David moved on. And then verse 24 says, because David was able to call on the joy of the Lord in his life, because he was able to hold on to the joy of the Lord in his life. He then was able to encourage his wife as well. Glory to God. Um, notice that David is able to hold on to his joy and that he is comforted by his joy. He is able to then comfort his wife. It's like when you get on an airplane, my brothers and sisters, and the flight attendant uh, goes through the safety protocols with you. And they tell you to... Make sure you have your mask on securely. And then once you have your mask on securely, you then can help your neighbor put their mask on if they are struggling to do so. Glory to God. Can I tell you that when you encourage yourself in the Lord and that when you are able to move on and press on with joy in the Lord, that you can spread that joy and comfort those whom you care about, who desperately need it. Glory to God. I, I thank God for those of you uh, who have spread your joy to me when I felt down and discouraged. Glory to God. And, and I pray that the feeling uh, is mutual. That is how it is supposed to work in the body of Christ when we are full of the joy of the Lord. Glory to God. Let's review, my brothers and sisters, the points of this message. Point number one was this. Walking in joy means sometimes you got to encourage yourself. Point number two is this. To walk in joy sometimes means you got to move on. Don't stay stuck. Move on. And then finally, point number three. When you walk in joy, you can encourage and comfort those who desperately need it. Sometimes you. Come on, Sister Rebecca. Sorry, one sec. Himself in night, in dark 
darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice and trembles at his voice how great is our God say with me how great is our God and oh we'll see God. Age to age we stand, and time is in His hands. Beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Thank you, Sister Rebecca. Truly, we serve a great, 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 great God. If we had a thousand tongues, come on somebody, if we had a thousand tongues, it wouldn't be enough to give him the praise that he deserves. So Sister Rebecca, I'm sorry I, I caught you off guard. We, we finished a little bit quicker than usual. We're gonna get out uh, before the method is due. <laughs> glory to God somebody thought I was going solo not exactly maybe next time I tell you one thing though uh, uh based on the joy of the Lord uh, I can sing and give him praise no matter what I'm going through hallelujah can I get a witness uh this morning glory to God maybe you're watching this message uh, and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord of your life and in the pardon of your sins. It's our prayer here at Compassionate Church uh, that you would turn your life over him today, that you would repent of your sins, that you would confess 
your wrongdoing and that you will begin to trust and follow in the Lord so that you too can experience that joy. Now, not, not happiness that's just based on what's happened in, but joy that's buried deep down in your heart. Joy that is eternal because it comes from our eternal God. Or maybe you're like me. Sometimes you get down if you're not careful. Sometimes you, you, you may become suspect or victim, victim to allow the devil or the world or the flesh to take your joy away. And you needed the reminder that you can encourage yourself, that you can move on, and that there may be somebody in your life who is counting on you by the power of God to use your joy to encourage them to also be joyful in the Lord. We trust that that's where you stand today, that you will lean on the joy of the Lord as your strength. We would ask that uh, if there's any questions about salvation, that you feel free uh, to leave us a message here at Compassionate Church, that you would reach out to us here and we would be honored and glad to walk you through that. Uh, in fact, all heaven will be celebrating once you make that decision. So now I'm going to ask that you all would join me as I read the benediction. And although I can't hear you, I'm going to trust that you're reading out loud right along with me. Why? Because I trust God that you got the joy of the Lord in your heart. Let's read it. Romans 15, 13. Let's read it together. It says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now may the grace of God, his son Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in each and every one of us, henceforth now and forevermore. In the precious and mighty and joyful name of Jesus Christ, I offer this prayer. Amen and amen. God bless you and have a joyful week in the Lord, my brothers and sisters.